Okay, Sam, I've, I've done the first oh, thing and then I've clicked go live. Now it says setting up your webinar for Facebook Live. No, it's okay. Just wait. I just thought it's going to be ages. Okay, Sam, I think that's done. Okay, everyone, so we're live on Facebook now. So we'll start letting everyone in in a second. It's saving the same. The address is saying it's invalid. Sam, can you uh, resend it to him, please? Yes. The base. Oh. Okay, given that we're live on Facebook, guys, I'm going to go live now. Okay, so Ross, you ready to introduce it to the world? Yes, so. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to this week's Impact Wrestling Press Pass podcast. This is Ross Foreman, and uh, I see his joke. So let's welcome first in Josh Matthews. Josh, how you doing today? I'm good, Ross. Nice to um, hear from everyone and talk to everybody uh, for another week of uh, <clears throat> exciting Impact action. Sorry, my voice is gone. Just got done doing a, uh, a voiceover session, but... Um, we have a very uh, impressive and impactful show we're looking forward to tonight that all gets started at, uh, at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Do we have our, our, our guests of honor on the line this week? Well, we have one of them. We're waiting for uh, Chris Saban's got a little technical difficulty, so maybe we can start with right. Ace. Well, well, how about I would just run down what we have going on tonight. Um, Motor City Machine Guns and Ace Austin and Madman Fulton in the main event. Rich Swan, we'll hear from him. We've got some knockouts tag team action with Tasha Steeles and Kira Hogan versus Rosemary and Taya. We're just 18 nights away from the biggest night of the year, Bound for Glory, live on pay-per-view. And uh, Bound for Glory is, as we uh, <clears throat> have been looking at it over the last number of days and weeks, and now less than three weeks to go, we've got a lot going on, of course, World Championship match and and coming off of Victory Road this past Saturday night, we know the knockouts title will be on the line when Deanna defends against Kylie Ray. We know the tag team championship match, so so an awful lot to to, to unpack, uh, as they say. And and of course, you can pre-order Bound for Glory right now on Fight TV. Stream it, and um, that's certainly something that um, uh, I think. Go ahead and order it now because after Slammiversary, I don't think anybody is going to be disappointed following bound for glory so uh with all that said i think uh we can talk to we can talk to uh ace austin at this time inevitable ace austin as he calls himself and we have uh chris saban with us i believe he's with us here chris and ace austin who should we who should we start with chris why don't we default to you as one half of the impact wrestling World Tag Team Champions um, sure. at Motor City Machine Guns returned to Impact at Slamversary. Let's go all the way back to there. What was it like to uh, to sort of come back and see everything? Um, and it's almost like I compared you guys to Bill and Ted. You found a time machine, and and it's like you didn't miss a beat. I see Chris Saban in the room. Chris, are you with us? Maybe still some technical issues. Oh, oh what a shame. Hmm. Ace, Ace, did you do something to his phone? Uh, well, I certainly hope that Mr. Tag Team Champion isn't late, you know, to our match tonight. 
He was, you know, late to the meeting today. Can't hear him. What a champ. What a champ. Well, as we uh, try to get Chris Saban's line opened up, I think Ace, you might have had something to do with it. You're you're a nefarious type of fella, but um, you're right. also accomplished X Division champion. And um, and how prepared are you for what's going to go down uh, tonight? And then, of course, at Bound for Glory. The inevitable thing, the inevitable thing is is a lot more than just a moniker. Okay, I'm always prepared. I'm always ready. Success is bound to be mine. There's no way it can't be. Hey, can you hear me? Hey, Chris Saban. How are All you? right. I got to work in here. Hey. <laughs> did you uh, did you happen to hear the question that I asked you at the beginning, or do you need to have that re, re, reissued? Can you reissue that, please? Yes, sir. So we were talking about machine guns coming back. You're now the tag team champions. What was it like at Slammiversary? Um, I compared you guys to Bill and Ted. It was like you found a time machine came back didn't miss a beat how are you feeling uh, i feel good um you know slam anniversary was definitely special it was cool to reunite the machine guns and uh you know we had a good match with the rascals and obviously like that match led to more success in impact wrestling so yeah i could say nothing but good things about it and, and let's go through the three teams that you'll face at bound for glory for the tag team titles and and, and we'll leave ace and fulton for last so he can respond but let's start with the good brothers uh, Machine Gun Carl Anderson, Big LG, Doc Gallows, and everything that they've done and accomplished where they've come from. Now here, they want to be tag team champions. Uh, do you think that, one, they respect you guys, and two, uh, they're, they take you guys serious enough? Uh, I don't think they – I think they respect us. I definitely don't think they take us seriously enough, obviously, with just our interaction with them. You can tell they don't take us that seriously. And, you know, I don't know if I would if I were in their shoes. You know, we're not very intimidating. We're not the largest. But the thing is, uh, our skill level is just on – you know, it, it's completely different level from everyone else in wrestling. So uh, I'm not worried about that. You know, they can take us lightly and we'll just take advantage of that. And then there's the former tag team champions, the team that you guys have defeated. And, and then again at Redemption, um, the North and Ethan Page and Josh Alexander, they'll be in this match. What's your what's your scouting report on them? Uh, basically just to go back and watch the couple of matches we had with them, you know, and just, you know, study the kind of things that they do. And, you know, it's, it's not easy to prepare for uh, three different teams. You know, you got a lot of tape watching to do and a lot of studying to do. So, you know, you just got to put in the work and, and, and be prepared and be ready. And then that leaves us with the, uh, the third team in this match and we'll let Ace respond when you finish, but what's your takeaway on Ace Austin and Madman Fulton? Uh, I'm interested to see our match tonight, um, just, just to see how it goes. And, uh, um, you know, I, I think Ace is super talented, but I just think he's young. And I think that, uh, you know, his attitude is the only thing that holds him back at this point. But, you know, what can I say? When I was his age, I was, I was just as cocky as could be, you know, when you're, uh, you know, that young and you're on national television wrestling every week, you know, it's, it's going to go to your head. So can I say I blame him? No, but uh, at, at some point he's going to realize that that only holds him back. Ace, do you have a response? Sure. I have a response. The way I see it, I, I'm the only person in this match with a pinfall victory over one Chris Saban of the Motor City Machine Guns. So you might think that the, the newest tag team in the mix here, the least experienced tag team in the mix here, would be at a disadvantage, but I don't think so. You can't really study us as a tag team because you don't really know us as a tag team yet. So I think we've got the edge. Okay, well, at this point, we're going to hand things over to our media. And Simon, if you can let me know in the chat uh, who you're opening up and when their video and audio is ready to go. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to fill uh, and, and wait. So um, go ahead and, and let me know. And I know we've got a lot of hands raised and a lot of folks want to get to their questions and they want to know uh, uh, what's going on with the tag team title what's going on with ace and chris saban and with that said we'll go to our first question darren i'm so bad at reading last names paul <laughs> paul Trowitz. paul Trowitz. darren are you are you there and ready with your question i sure am paul Trowitz. You, you pretty much got it and i appreciate that and my question is for everybody including josh ross and simon if they want to weigh in and that's access tv is my favorite channel on television and it is the home of impact wrestling 
Besides Impact Wrestling, do you have a second favorite show on Access TV? Chris Saban, you want to go first? Yeah, I just like watching, like I'll randomly find like a music documentary, like something on The Who or something, you know, and just, you know, flipping through the channels and I'll stop and watch it for a while. So they did do a lot of uh, cool classic rock stuff. And uh, so I enjoy just, you know, wh whatever's on, just checking it out, live concerts, all that stuff. Yeah. Ace Austin, when you're not watching your matches back and, and uh, being on social media, what do you check out on Access? Ace Austin is just my favorite thing to watch on Access TV, period. I, I, can't, I can't say anything else. That's it. It's the most important thing on Access TV. Very, very confident young man is, uh, is Ace Austin. Uh, thank you, Darren, for the question. Much appreciated. And, and we do love being on Access TV each and every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and uh, appropriate time to plug Impact Week on Access. Of course, the, uh, the go-home week from Bound for Glory. And it all gets started October 20th. Uh, so, guys, keep your hands raised for your questions inside the chat, and uh, they will let me know, and we will get to you. Jeffrey Coleman will be up next. Jeffrey, are you ready with your question? I'm good to go. You, can, you guys can hear me all right? Yes, sir. All right. My question is for Mr. Saban. Uh, going back to the first Bound for Glory and even the first non-weekly TNA pay-per-view, you and Alex Shelley have been together this whole journey. What's it been like to be, have someone by your side and even going into the biggest pay-per-view event of the year defending the tag titles? Uh, I mean, it helps with confidence because, you know, yeah, you know, we've known each other for over a decade. We've been teaming for over a decade. We've known each other for so long. So uh, we can rely on each other. And that's the thing, you know, when you have someone you can rely on and you can trust, and then, you know, that just helps improve your confidence and all that. So. Thank you. Okay, Jeffrey, thank you very much for your question. And we certainly cannot wait 18 nights bound for glory and, and just an absolutely incredible night. It's going to be in who will leave as world tag team champions. We have an old friend on next with his next question. Uh, Riju from Sports Kid. Uh, Riju, what's up, buddy? Uh, we just lost Riju's connection for one second, but I'm bringing him back in now. Okay, great. We had such a great flow going. While we wait for Riju, don't There's forget Riju. Guys, Is he, uh... use the hashtag impact on Access TV here tonight as we get ready for the show in just a few hours. Riju, are you there? Unmute yourself, Riju. Hey, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. So, Josh, when do you come to India? <laughs> Riju, do you have a question for Chris Saban or uh, Ace Austin, buddy? I do. I do. Uh, so, uh, here's a question for Chris Saban. Uh, so, uh, after so many years in the business, how instrumental do you think the X Division has been to modern wrestling? Uh, like, what kind of influence has it had on wrestling? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's huge. I mean, I think if you just go back and uh, realize what the X Division did was basically just become this melting pot of styles because, you know, we were kind of the generation that first started ha uh, being able to watch wrestling on the internet. So with uh, more people being able to watch wrestling on the internet, they're exposed to more styles, whether it be, you know, Japanese style, Mexican style, British style, all the different styles around the world. So uh, like our generation kind of just became this melting pot of mixing all the styles of wrestling together. And that's pretty much what the X Division was. You know, we, we watched everything and tried to make this new style that was a combination of all the best and uh, I think that's just kind of like what this new generation is like there you know you see uh, the influence of every worldwide style and uh, I think the X Division was just the first to do that. Riju thanks for your question much appreciated and then um, Chris to, to, to follow up on that uh, you obviously a former X Division champion I'm gonna go to Ace also a former X Division champion you say the current generation do you consider yourself a part of that current generation or do you consider yourself one of the forefathers of the current generation? I don't know. I guess both. I would say both. I guess I, that, that's how long I've been around. When you've been around for 20 years, I guess you can consider yourself both. Man. Ace, anything to add about the X Division? <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. A guy comes in to ask a question about the X Division and doesn't want to talk to the greatest X Division champion of all time. I mean, it's what a missed opportunity on his part. If what do you, you mean? Me. He did. 
He did. What are you talking oh, about? Oh, oh, did he? Did he really? <laughs> uh, guys, appreciate the decorum. Uh, as you guys get ready for uh, more and more action uh, in the final weeks leading towards Bound for Glory, Mike Gilbert is next. Hello, Mike. Mike, you there? <clears throat> going once, going twice for Mike Gilbert. Are you muted? Yes, I'm here. Mike, what's your question? Oh, hi. I got a question for uh, Chris. Um, so when the Motor City Machine Guns were uh, previously in Impact slash TNA, it kind of seemed like you guys were, despite being so successful, you guys were underappreciated by uh, impact management. Um, but now that you guys are back and you guys are uh, seen as, at, a, at a main event level, um, what, what, what are your thoughts on that and the evolution of tag team wrestling since you guys were previously a tag team and today? Uh, I mean, I guess it's just timing, you know, that the timing wasn't right for us back then, you know, sure. We were tag team champions and we had a nice little run with the belts, you know, had some great matches with beer money, had some great matches with generation me, if you know, who those guys are. Um, but, you know, I, I guess it just wasn't, the, wasn't the time for us, you know, the atmosphere wasn't right in this company for, for us to really thrive. And it's now the time is right, obviously um, where, you know, uh, I think people are really excited to see the Motor City Machine Guns return. And, um, you know, it's time when the world needs something happy. And, you know, I think we, we brought something happy to the world during this time. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I think people I, are even more excited to see the Motor City Machine Guns extinguished at Bad for Glory. That's what yeah, I think. Yeah, you think so? All right. Well, I guess we'll see what happens. Yeah. Trash talking continues between <laughs> Chris Saban and, I, and uh, excuse me, Ace Austin here uh, this week on Press Pass as we are talking about the World Tag Team Championship four-way match at Bound for Glory in 18 nights. Uh, next up, welcome to Press Pass, Brad Marcus. Hey, Brad, how are you? I'm doing good. Thank you guys for having me and, and Chris and all the participants. Thank you for your time. Chris, this is for you. Um, Alex and yourself have faced everyone all over the world. You've wrestled everywhere all over the world. You've held gold everywhere and have seen it all. Are there anything in these three other teams that maybe you haven't seen yet in the ring? Uh, that's hard to say because how do you know you haven't seen something if you've never seen it? You know what I mean? Uh, I mean that you, so you've seen, you know, like on, you know, in person or on the web of these matches of these teams. Uh, well, I mean, I definitely think each of these teams are unique, uh, especially when you're a tag team, like just the chemistry between the two partners is always like something unique for, uh, with any tag team. Uh, so, yeah, I, I definitely see unique chemistry with all those guys. But, yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, you can just do your best to prepare and watch their stuff. And, and you know, if there's stuff that I've never seen before, then I won't know how to defend against it. So I hope you didn't just give them some sort of like strategy now to try to come up with stuff we've never seen before. Do you see any of yourself and Alex in any of these three teams, any of the participants? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Like I said, uh, you know, I was saying earlier about Ace, you know, like uh, when I was his age, you know, I had, I had an attitude like he does and I was, you know, very arrogant and stuff, you know, and like uh, eventually, you know, you gain experience and you get older and you realize that, uh, you, you know, your ego holds you back more than it helps you, so. I don't know, being Thanks. the second youngest X Division champion of all time seems like I'm, uh, I got a pretty good track record going for myself. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I agree. You do, but, you know, eventually it catches up. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, fellas. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the question. Uh, Ace, are you getting a little irritated? It seems that most of the questions are, are, are coming to Chris. Just feels a little bit like a, like a, like a waste of, uh, like a waste of my time right now, but it's okay. Okay. Well, we, we do appreciate your time. And maybe Vanessa from Putting You Over has a question for Ace Austin. Hello, Vanessa. Uh, yeah. Hello. Um, for sure. Uh, so for Ace, I have set up here. Uh, so coming up here, you have the cards and everything with your setup. So do you have any tricks up your sleeve that'll help you tomorrow night with your victory and also at Bound for Glory? If you know anything about Ace Austin, you know that Ace Austin's always got an ace up his sleeve. So, of course, of course, there's always something loaded. 
I've always got a plan. And if plan A doesn't go, there's always a plan B and a plan C, so on and so forth. It's inevitable. That's why I say it. I appreciate that question. I was hoping he was going to say what his game plan was. Then, you know, I, I would hear it, you know, but he didn't, he didn't, you know, he didn't say so. Young, but not dumb. Yes, he's not going to show his cards yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Vanessa, any questions uh, for Mr. Sabin? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, thank you. Um, so we're just going to go through. So you are like returning veteran coming back. So you started out against uh, Team 3D and I had them putting you over. So now you're set up to put over the new younger talent with Ace Austin, Madman Fulton and Rascals. So do you feel that there's a pr added pressure on you for that or in good or bad anyway? No, I don't think so. I, I think uh, we're not ready to put over the young guys yet. I think we're still kind of in that bitter veteran stage where we just, uh, you know, don't want to put over the young guys yet. So that's not going to happen. Perfect. Thank you so much. As if there's a choice in the matter. Am I right? <laughs> Vanessa, thank you very much for your time. And we appreciate the questions for both Ace Austin and Chris Sabin as we get ready for uh, this showdown. Uh, on the 24th, you know, Ace, you said there's going to be a plan A and a plan B. I thought you were going to go with plan M in, in Madman Fulton. Oh, see, <laughs> I guess you're right. I, I guess I don't need that many backup plans when you got somebody like Madman, the largest human being to grace impact wrestling behind me, you know. You have a reason to be confident. Let's go to Michael from Lucha Libre Online. Hello, Michael. Thanks for joining us. Uh, hello, guys. Can you hear me well? Yes, sir. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I have two questions, one for Ace and one for Mr. Sabin. Uh, with Ace Austin, uh, you're 23 years old. At your young age, you've accomplished so many things. Even uh, you're now in one of the biggest matches of one of the <laughs> biggest pay-per-views in the year. Uh, my question for you is, do you consider yourself uh, to be the ace and the future face of Impact Wrestling? You said future face. I mean, listen, I may Slammiversary might not have gone my way, but I don't think there's any doubt that impact wrestling is mine, that I am the face. So yeah, I guess you could say the future. Yes, because I don't plan on letting that go anytime soon, but I'm, I'm right here and I'm right now. Awesome. And uh, for Mr. Sabin, uh, we heard uh, FTR, from another company made uh, some interesting comments regarding a team they want to face and that they are open to face the motor seat machine guns. Even uh, they planted uh, that opinion. Uh, they mentioned that opinion to Tony Khan. Uh, we've seen Scott Amore, Scott Amore on, on the Twitter account being a little bit verbal about this, uh, mentioning that he's open uh, to having uh, work between multiple brands. So we've seen him working with AAA, for example. Uh, would you be inter interested in working this uh, possible match or possible scenario uh, with AEW's FTR in order to promote and solidify Impact's product? Sure, as long as they come over to Impact Wrestling. They yeah. come on over, meet us on our turf, and they can wrestle on our show. And then, yeah, I'd be more than interested to wrestle those guys. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Thank you very much, Michael from Lucha Libre Online. And we'll next go to Bill Pritchard from WrestleZone.com. Bill, good afternoon. Welcome to Press Pass. Hey, Josh. How are you? Good. Thank you. So I actually do have a question for both uh, Ace and Chris. I'll start with Chris. Um, you've had an a history with injuries you had torn your ACL three separate times and as we've seen this week Tegan Knox of NXT this is her third uh, injury of the similar nature so while it's a devastating injury for any athlete is there anything that you can really say as far as maybe giving her advice or anybody in the similar situation or just something you've learned about just really coming back from Three, three injuries like that and now being a tag team champion and still being at the top of your game after all of that? Yeah, sure, sure. I, I think it's about all about your mental state. Um, it's easy to get down and it's easy to uh, be unmotivated when, uh, you know, you, like when I tore my ACL for the third time, it was like, all right, 
I'm at the the longest point before I'm going to wrestle again. Like you got to get your mind in the right spot, you know? So uh, basically you just got to remind yourself why you do what you do. Like uh, one of the things I did when I was um, it just began the whole prehab and surgery and all that process and everything was I went back and I watched uh, old wrestling that I used to watch on Saturday mornings, like the stuff I watched as a kid, the stuff that, you know, uh, originally made me love wrestling for the first time. And, uh, like, yeah, okay. That that's why I do this. This is the reason why I do this. You know, just, just that feeling you would get, you know, when you were a kid again and you just had these dreams and, uh, all these, you know, the, the world was this wide open limitless place where you can go out and, and accomplish things and all that. So, uh, really, yeah. I mean, just, you got to stay motivated. You got to keep your mind in the right spot. You got to put in the work and, uh, you know, listen to your physical therapists and your doctors and do things the right way. And, and, and you can come back from it. You know, I truly think anyone can. All right, and then to Ace, you started <clears throat> off the earlier part of this year as a singles competitor. You're an X Division champion. Was You were in the World Championship match, but now you're actually teaming with Madman Fulton. So I wanted to know, when I spoke with him earlier this year, there were a lot of Shawn Michaels and Diesel comparisons. So how do you feel about that comparison? Is there something that something different that you could bring to not only impact wrestling, but really elevate the, the big man, small man team that we haven't seen before. Absolutely. I, I think, uh, I think about 90% of what I do is something you haven't seen before. I think I'm one of the most authentic and original professional wrestlers of, of not just this generation, but any generation. Uh, and you, you're absolutely right. I started this, started this year as a singles competitor and uh, I certainly never saw myself in a tag team picture, but when things didn't quite go according to plan at Slammiversary, it seemed, uh, it seemed like the only logical thing to do would be to, uh, to go ahead and just jump in that tag division. Why not become a triple crown champion during my time with impact wrestling? I think that's just inevitable. I think already X division champion. I think next up we have the tag champs and then I'll come back around to that world championship. Thank you both very much for your time. Bill, thank you very much, guys. Be sure to check out WrestleZone and uh, appreciate the coverage that WrestleZone provides to Impact Wrestling each and every week as we get ready for the show tonight, just a few short hours away. A couple more episodes of Impact Wrestling before we get to Bound for Glory live on the 24th of October. Next up is uh, Najir Chambers. Najir, do you have a question for either Ace or... Chris Saban. I do for the Buffalo moment, if that's okay. Uh, it, we'll st- start off with Ace. Now, Ace, it would not be a bound for glory if you was not in a championship contention. So, with that being said, what type of prep and conversations have you had with Madman Fulton, who's just a little inexperienced on the grandest stage for gold? I think that, uh, well, for me, I'm always ready, clearly. If bound for glory last year was evidence of anything, I've always got the ace up my sleeve. As far as Madman Fulton goes, I think what what he might lack in the big match experience, he certainly makes up for in absolute raw power, size, strength. Look at the man. There's not much he needs to do to get ready. He's an immovable object. Right on, right on. And for you, Chris, now, Chris, you've... You, your track record is one of those guys who just gets in the ring and does the wrestles. When you're out there, you perform at the highest level, no matter where you're at in the entire world. But what we're seeing right now at Impact is we're getting to see a little bit of that charismatic charismatic side of you with some of the backstage segments that you've been having, uh, especially with the Good Brothers. Um, how has it been able to show a little bit of your personality on a, on a regular basis now? Yeah, no, it's cool. I mean, I don't know if... Uh anyone has been able to tell for the, you know, the last 20 years, um, I get extremely nervous, uh, whenever it's, it comes time to do promos. I, I've always been like that, just like my nerves are off the charts. So I think that, uh, I've been able to relax a lot more. And I think when I'm able to relax, um, you know, then that natural charisma comes out. So, you know, just got to work on relaxing in front of the camera. It's not easy. Even after 20 years, it's not easy for me to relax in front of the camera. So unless I'm wrestling, I'm super relaxed that, but you know, when I have to talk and jabber jaw, you know, that's different. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you. 
Hey, Nisha, are you still with us? Are you still there? Yes, I am. Hey, man, can you uh, send a message uh, to either Simon or Ross? Uh, you get to win the Josh Matthews just decided $25 gift card to shopimpact.com for the IPWF shirt because I love it. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Those guys will get your information and uh, we'll get you some stuff sent over. Okay, my friend? Right on. Thank you so much, y'all. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you for all the questions. Um, we've got some more questions that have come from social media and Ross Foreman will provide those questions yeah. for you guys. All right. Time. So, uh, this question is actually for both of you. It comes, uh, via our uh, fans who are watching on Facebook, uh, Bob G. I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name. Uh, his question is Ace and Madman have to be the favorites in the four way tag match at BFG. Everyone knows what to expect from the three other teams, but no one knows how to prepare for Ace and Madman. Both comment on that. Bingo. Well, I mean, exactly what I said earlier, isn't it? You can't be prepared for something you ain't seen. You, 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 what we might lack in, in the experience, like I said, we make up for with the, with that that edge. Well, well, that's fine. We'll see what happens tonight because tonight on Impact, you know, we have a match with just those two guys. So, uh, you know, we'll be able to come up with a game plan. We'll be able to get a feel for how they are in the ring and all that and then prepare, so. Ross, do we have more questions from fans on uh, via social on. media? Or are we going back to our questions? Uh, we're gonna from... move on. We're gonna move on to Vic now. Okay, great. Uh, so Vic, the villain, is up next. I see members of the media are now giving themselves wrestling nicknames. That's that's awesome. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, my question is for both athletes, but my part two, especially for Ace Austin. Uh, Bound for Glory is gonna showcase some of Impact's wrestling's top tag team so what does a victory what does a victory at bound for glory mean for your careers and my part two for ace uh how long before you and madman take over the entire tag division over at impact well i think bound for glory is obviously the perfect time for that so how many weeks we got till bound for glory that answers your question right there uh, as far as a win at bound for glory goes i mean just have a look at what it did for me last year just, just one year ago, became X Division champion, shot straight to the main event, main event slam anniversary. Here we are one year later, tag title time. So, yeah. Nice. Vic, did you have a question for Chris Saban as well? Yeah, also, what, 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 would, what would a victory here against all these tag teams mean going forward for Motor City? And, and what are we looking at for the future? I think it would solidify our dominance over these teams. It would prove why we are the champs and we would show everyone, you know, it's, it's, it's a vindication, you know, it's so, uh, you know, it, it's we're the champs right now. And if we're the champs afterwards, then we can say, all right, see you four teams. Now you guys are back at the bottom of the ladder and we're going to go wrestle um, the Deaners and triple XL and all these guys that are waiting their turn. Awesome, man. Thank Okay, thank you very much for the questions. I think we are now going to go to Carlos. So we'll see if Carlos is ready with his question. Carlos, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you guys hear me? Gotcha. Okay, awesome. Uh, so I have a question for Ace Austin. What do you think you can attribute your fast rise in Impact Wrestling to? Uh, I think <laughs> to the fact that uh, I, I was the youngest person on the roster when I was signed. And, uh, and I think that just that, that raw star power, that raw potential that I possessed when I first came in. And, uh, and then when it finally came out, especially by Bound for Glory last year, I mean, that, that was it. I mean, it, it was, it was clear that Ace Austin was, is the future. Absolutely. And I do have a question for Chris Saban. If I may, um, yeah, of what do you, what is like the biggest difference you can say from your last tenure with Impact Wrestling to now? Uh, probably the atmosphere of the company. Uh, just you know, it's completely different management. You know, different owners. It's just the, the whole environment is just completely different. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for taking your time. Carlos, thank you very much for your question and your time this afternoon on this Tuesday Impact Day. Make sure to use the hashtag Impact on 
Access TV tonight and wherever you're watching Impact from around the world. Uh, we'll now go to Dylan Hughes from Pro Wrestling Post. Dylan, what do you got, buddy? Yeah, how's it going? I got a question for Ace. Uh, you've obviously had a great career so far. You're consistently named one of the best wrestlers under 25. But um, that being said, coming into this match, there's a lot of talk between who's the best team in the company, between the Machine Guns, the Good Brothers, and the North. How much extra motivation does that give you to knock those three teams off and stand at the top of the loaded tag division you have in that company? Saban earlier was talking about the other tag teams in the division, you know, waiting patiently in line. I don't wait patiently in line. You know, that's just not something I need to do. There's just no reason for it. I'm, I'm clearly one of the best, as you said. So a spot at the top is guaranteed mine. Always. It has to be. Okay. And I got one for Saban. You've obviously had a, great return to impact with winning the tag titles already. Do you have any other specific goals you set out to achieve when returning to impact? Uh, not right now. I'm not trying to get too far ahead of myself right now. I'm perfectly content being the, you know, the best tag team in the company, being the tag team champions and, you know, representing impact wrestling from a tag team standpoint. And, you know, if uh, who knows what the future holds, but uh, you know, it'll always be just to do the best I could possibly do. Okay, awesome. Thank you, guys. We will. Thanks to your questions. We'll continue to uh, get questions from the media. Uh, if I can, though, real quick, uh, Chris, I got to ask you uh, it doesn't seem that Ace. Lost you, Josh. I don't know if it. Uh... doesn't seem that I would. Josh. His, um, lacking in confidence. And if his an ace, do you care to hear his advice? Chris, you can go first. I, I, you know what? You cut out, Josh. I, I, I didn't think I'm having a question. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and go to, to... I'm just hearing robot noises. While I try to figure out what's going on here. Uh, next. Okay, we're going to go to Jim Conlon while um, while we just fix that sound. So, Jim, have you got your question for um, Ace or Chris? Jim, please unmute yourself. Well, maybe we'll... Okay, try so we're going to go... To Jim Varsalone, then, while we wait for the other Jim. We seem to be having a few issues now. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Over to you. All right, Paul, question for Ace and then for Chris. I'm wondering, Ace, because you've had such a really good year, what have you learned? How is the growth in that process for you? And just trying to keep things in perspective, too. So you don't get too high or too overconfident. It, and it's a change going from singles to tag team. Oh, yeah, it's a huge change. But, I mean, when you're as good as I am, you can adapt. You know, being adaptable is one of the, one of the first things you learn as a pro wrestler. You just have to be able to, to mold and to move with what's going on, you know. And uh, <laughs> you say too overconfident, but I, I don't think that that's – you know, steered me wrong so far. When you are clearly one of the best, why not act like it? You know, if, if, if nothing can stand in my way, why would I let anything stand in my way? Well, you haven't so far. And Chris, let me ask you a question because you mentioned the rock band, The Who. And I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the High Crusade and if we might see them as a faction in Impact Wrestling or perform at Impact Wrestling? <laughs> well, I'm not sure. For, for those that don't know, the High Crusade was uh, a band that we used to have. It was uh, myself, Alex Shelley, Petey Williams, the Canadian Destroyer, and our buddies, Adam and Chris. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we have two albums, you know. I mean, there, I think you get, if you search on Bandcamp, The High Crusade, you can check out our first and our second album, which our second one never really got released. It kind of just got released as a digital version on Bandcamp. So, yeah, yeah. if you want to check it out, you know, it was it was a, an extremely fun project that we, that, you know, we all worked really hard on. So, yeah, check it out on Bandcamp and maybe you'll like it. All right. Thank you all. Thanks a lot, Jim. Can you guys hear me? Am I back in? Here you Awesome. Thank you guys. Sorry, not sure what happened there, but um, nonetheless, that's what happens on Zoom and we'll uh, continue to keep uh, going through here. Next up, we have uh, Joey from the Angle Podcast. Joey, are you ready with your questions? Yes, I'm ready. How are you guys? Joey Carney from the Angle Podcast. Uh, this question is for both competitors. The match at Bountiful Glory is quickly becoming uh, one of the favorite matches to see. It's easily so invested in. And it's because it consists of four of the best tag teams in the world. What does it mean to have tag team wrestling as a major pillar for BFG? Well, I, I mean, I think that speaks to how good the Motor City Machine Guns are. We're the champs. Uh, we're representing Impact Wrestling as the champions. And now tag team wrestling is at the forefront again. I mean, can we take all the credit? No, obviously there's lots of other talented tag teams in Impact Wrestling. But I think that says something for uh, who we are as a tag team. Yeah, I guess you could. Uh, I guess you could look at it that way. That perspective makes sense from your end, but I mean, let's think about Slammiversary. You know, the most important, you know, the most anticipated match was that main event at Slammiversary, which I was the favorite going into. Now we're looking at uh, this most anticipated match at Bound for Glory, which again, Ace Austin is a participant in. So I don't know. Ace Austin equals money. That's just what I'm studying. <laughs> It's what it looks like from my end. Awesome. I appreciate you guys' time. Thank you for the questions. Very much appreciated. Uh, gentlemen, do you have any final thoughts as we get ready for what's going to go down here tonight? Let's start with uh, the incumbent champion. Let's start with Chris Saban. Chris, with everything going on, what are your uh, – Last things you want to say about Impact tonight, of course, and then uh, as we get ready for Bound for Glory. Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, the Motor City Machine Guns have worked really hard to get to this point. Um, uh, you know, we put in the work for years and years. We still practice a lot to this day. Um, I think Ace and Fulton are going to find out how good we really are tonight on Impact. And then they're really going to find out, along with those other teams at Bound for Glory, you know, we're, we're just the best. It's, it's that simple. The Motor City Machine Guns are the best tag team there is. And uh, everyone's going to find that out at Bound for Glory. I think Ace? I think that initially initially I might have been a little upset that this match was a four-way tag match at Bound for Glory. I mean, I think that me and Madman Fulton more than deserve a one-on-one -on -one for those tag titles, uh, especially considering, again, I have a pinfall victory over Chris Saban. Um, but uh, I guess my final thought is that uh, a new champ – uh, a new a new set of tag team champions at Bound for Glory is inevitable. Ace, thank you very much for your time. We certainly appreciate it this afternoon. Chris Saban, obviously you as well, as you guys get ready to prepare for not only tonight, but of course Bound for Glory live on pay-per-view Saturday night, October 24th. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. So guys, Press Pass will continue as we get ready to hear from Executive Vice President Scott DeMore at the top of the hour, just about four minutes from right now. And we appreciate everybody joining us here, obviously having a, uh, a great opportunity to, to speak to everybody and a great opportunity to uh, get ready for Bound for Glory with Press Pass and the Championship Series and hearing from Tennille Dashwood last week and everything that she had to say and everything that we are getting ready to talk about. Uh, a very exciting time in Impact Wrestling for all of us. And we do thank you for supporting us, for joining us, and for getting ready uh, as this Press Pass kind of goes into uh, to overtime. Bonus, bonus-sized Press Pass 
uh, this week here for for all of you. And remember, you can check out Press Pass and, and hear and see your questions um, on Facebook and uh, all of Impact Wrestling's social media channels as um, we think that Bound for Glory is, is obviously shaping up to be a night that everyone will want to see that is certainly can't miss. And it feels like that that um, sentiment is felt throughout. And um, Impact Wrestling is certainly excited to announce a brand new television partnership with uh, British and Irish fans, pay-per-view and special events are on Premier Sport, including Victory Road, which goes down tonight at 9 p.m. this evening. And then our weekly show Wednesdays at 10 p.m. on Free Sports, that's free to air channel, prime time, everything that all of you have been asking for for quite some time. And I mean, honestly, Wednesday night at 10 p.m., prime time uh, viewing, and you're getting Impact Wrestling not long after the uh, the U.S. airing on Tuesday night. So just uh, a great opportunity to reconnect with all of our amazing fans. It's always been uh, such a treat for us to go to the United Kingdom and to be a part of all the shows over there, the tours over there. And uh, certainly uh, Impact cannot wait to come back. And, and we talked to Simon quite a bit. Simon, I'm looking at you right now, buddy. And we talked to you about coming back and and just having some uh, some amazing times over in the United, in the UK and all the all the great events that we've done over there throughout the years. Yeah, so many incredible memories of you know the Wembley shows, the Manchester shows, um, the initial shows in Coventry in Liverpool, um, the fun times in the bar and at the after parties, getting to meet so many fans. You know the fan signings that we used to do beforehand, the fan interactions that you know always sold out in seconds. Got so many memories of those, and just watching the fans and the talent just interact was amazing. And although I love I love these Zoom calls and seeing all the media on this, it's so much better that you know when we when we can interact properly. And we're really looking forward to coming back as soon as the situation allows. Yep, and uh, looking at the attendee list right now, a lot of questions ready to be asked and and ready to go as we just await the arrival of Scott Demore should be happening here right at the top of the hour. So again, we want to thank Chris Sabin and Ace. Austin for joining us here as they get ready to uh, to talk about everything that is going to be going down uh, later tonight on Impact Wrestling and Ace and Fulton and Saban and Shelly and the Machine Guns and the Tag Team Division in Impact Wrestling. Absolutely uh, incredible. Uh, Ross, while we have a couple of seconds, anything that you would like to add as we get ready to, uh, to talk to Scott? No, it's, uh, as I say, Bound for Gordy is really shaping up. Obviously, you got the main event. We know the uh, Eric Young and Rich Swan. You got the knockouts. So I think uh, Bound for Glory is going to live up to its name, as always. So uh, can't wait for that. October 24th. And there he is. Scott Demore. Good afternoon. Shake it, Ro hey, Roscoe. How are you? I'm great. You pulled me off of a budget meeting, so I'm grateful. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Always trying to help you out there. Uh, Josh, I'll turn it over to you. Hello, Scott. Joshua, what's shaking? Oh, just got done having a uh, very interesting interaction between uh, Ace and Chris Sabin and the build-up to Bound for Glory and the four-way uh, tag team championship match, but... Um, as we were talking about when those guys hung up, uh, you're here with us this week to talk about uh, Impact Wrestling's exciting news and partnership uh, with our British and Irish fans. And I know that it's something that, uh, that Impact's been working towards for quite some time. I know you're pretty excited about this. Yeah, I mean, first, I'm, I'm excited that I actually missed having to be on here with the talent because for anyone who's been following Impact Weekly, you know, I've had it about up to up here with uh, talent lately, um, but talent's what drives the bus as, uh, as an old friend of ours, uh, Ross used to say. So um, we deal with them even when they're sometimes a little difficult, but yeah, exciting news coming up. It's great. Uh, you know, UK fans have been a huge part of Impact Wrestling over the years. I don't think it's overstating it to say that without the, the rabid and loyal support of UK fans that I'm not sure that Impact Wrestling would still be here uh, today. It's been a great market. It's been a great fan base. And starting tomorrow, you know, everybody gets to see if you've got a television, then, then you can see 
I think it's over 20 million homes in the UK. Uh, you, you, can, you can see Impact Wrestling and you can see it for free and you can see it less than 24 hours after it happens uh, all here in the States. So excited about that. That's on free sports. And then also the monthly specials and all the pay-per-views. You can see that at uh, Premier Sports, which is, a, which is a great pay channel, has, has Series A soccer. I think it has Premier League. Uh, has the NHL, which of course is a Canadian I love, and just being associated with uh, with free sports and premier sports over in the UK, we're just super excited to get over there and, and even increase our engagement with that UK fan base. Yep, and as Scott mentioned, guys, it does uh, tomorrow night, 10 p.m., but um, obviously uh, Victory Road tonight, um, it all gets started on premier sports, so uh, as he mentioned, the, the monthly specials and you don't have to wait long, Victory Road tonight. So with that said, we're going to go to our first question. This is uh, Dane from Hooked On. Dane, you're on with uh, Impact Executive Vice President Scott Demore. What do you got, Dane? Thanks, Josh. Hi, Scott. Um, I just hey, wanted to ask, I'm really excited about the new TV deal. And I was wondering, as the Executive Vice President, what was the chase of kind of regaining a prime spot in the UK again like? Oh man, it's been uh, it's been something that right away in 2018 when Ed Nordholm, Don Callis, and myself really took the reins here, uh, getting reengaged and reinvigorated on a meaningful way in the UK was an important part of our plan. Uh, unfortunately, we had to kind of focus on our home base for a while and get organized. Uh, that's happened, and then obviously the whole world has turned upside down recently. Um, but th this this deal with with free sports and with Premier Sports really has us excited because we want the same thing that UK wrestling fans want. We want to entertain them. We want to be there with them every week. And we also, of course, I know I'm going to hear it a, a ton of times, like I do in my Twitter on a weekly basis. When are you coming back to the UK? And the situation of 2020 and the pandemic have kind of pushed some of those plans back. But, uh, you know, a silver lining now that we're on free sports we are really going to be able to out there and run some great events uh, when the world allows us to would like to get that done we we're hoping 2020 obviously with everything that didn't happen uh 2021 we'd, we'd like to you know you know latter part of 2021 be over there Aaron, in front of the uk fans brilliant thank you so much Dan, thanks, thanks a lot for your question. Much appreciated as we continue to move on. Lots of hands raised, lots of questions to be asked. Let's go to James from the 90s Wrestling Podcast. Hey, James. Oh, easy up, mate. Yes, sir. Uh, hi, Josh. I've uh, been a fan of yours, by the way, for many, many years. So it's actually great to speak to you as well. Um, but my first uh, question for Mr. Damore, which uh, quick thing I do want to say is, Thank you for acknowledging the uh, UK support because uh, it's true what you said. We've been like big, big supporters of Impact Wrestling for many, many years. So I'm, it's really great to know that you um, appreciate that. But um, uh, two questions. My first question is, I know it's been mentioned previous that there's not going to be any fans in attendance for BFG. But have you uh, maybe discussed the possibility of having some talent at ringside? Well, I mean, I guess first, uh, thanks for your support. And uh, I'll never forget the first time when uh, we went to the UK on our first tour. I think for a lot of us, it was our, our first real opportunity to be somewhere like, you know, like, dang it, we weren't the Beatles, but we were rock stars uh, when we got over to the UK <laughs> for that first tour. And that, that meant a lot to us. Uh, and that's why the UK will always hold a special place. You know, everybody's tackling things in this, uh, you know, unprecedented time differently. And uh, I, I applaud all wrestling organizations and people in general as we as we try to find some type of normality. And uh, I know other people have had fans there. I mean, I've seen it and, uh, you know, we monitor everything. We've kind of looked at our own situation and, and kind of said that, uh, you know, for where we are, we just we just don't feel comfortable with it. And, um, you know, even with the, the, the talent, like, uh, you know, we're not, we're not a place that carries 150 uh, talents and can, can just place talents out there. Like our talents that are at the show, or if you're not seeing them on camera, they're probably either backstage stretching, getting ready for their stuff, or they're shooting content backstage that might be for Impact Plus or might be for, for um, you know, Twitter or YouTube or something else. And our talent have very, very busy days. And the idea of, of slowing them down to put them out there in the crowd, um, 
one, it doesn't seem fair to them. And, and, and two, as much as possible, we try to follow safe practices and limiting the amount of people that are in close contact. So for, for now, it's the status quo, but we monitor it on a daily basis. And, and b- b- believe me, James, as much as all you fans uh, want there to be people out in the crowd, hopefully you guys out in the crowd, um, like our, our roster and us all want it more. Because, uh, I mean, I got to really tip my hat to our roster. I don't know how our roster and really wrestlers all over the industry, going out there and doing what they do with, with no – you know, we're all, we're all attention starved and without any instant gratification of that crowd response. I mean, I, I really, really uh, just tip my hat and uh, commend all our, um, all of our talent for going out there and, and busting uh, their butts. The, the men and women go out there and put on unbelievable performances night after night, week after week. And they do it because they know that even though there's nobody in that, that studio, there's uh, there's millions of fans that are getting to see this content and this show around the world. And, uh, you know, that's what uh, spurs them on. And uh, until we feel like we're in a situation to allow people back into the arena, um, you know, our talent will, will do what they do best, which is go out there and, and perform no matter what the circumstances. Cool. And uh, the last question. Uh... Recently, a certain TNA original Tennessee Cowboy seems to be available. Is there a chance there might be a surprise appearance at Bound for Glory? I mean, never say never. I've had uh, I've had a few run-ins with the Cowboy over the years. I mean, I recall him and Wildcat, <laughs> you know, handcuffing me to uh, the Ultimate X structure once. I've been on the <laughs> I've been on the wrong end of one too many super kicks. Uh, but I also, you know, respect James and have a long history with him. And uh, it's in the wacky world of pro wrestling. So uh, you never know what's going to happen. You never know who's going to show up where. And, uh, you know, certainly we've had an open door policy over the years and, you know, certainly under Anthem Sports. And, uh, you know, you just have to tune in and see if, uh, if Long Necks and Red Necks plays in the impact zone sometime soon. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, James. Thank you. All right, James from the 90s Wrestling Podcast. Thank you very much. We're going to move on to our next caller, our good friend from France, Stephanie from Steel Chair Magazine. Hi, Scott. Bonjour, Stephanie. Bonjour, Scott. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing, Stephanie? Great, great. Um... Just a, a, a few sentences to thank you, because we're going to have Bon for Glory with French comment, uh, a French announcer on, on Fight TV. And I can tell you it's really well appreciated uh, from the French fans that are watching on Twitch, because that's the only way we can here in France. But uh, really, it's really well appreciated and it's a good thing. Um, I just I wanted to ask you, because of course, since the beginning of the year, uh, Impact is now um, uh, the the I won't say that the the, the tweets the, um, it's booming. Everything is booming again. Uh, uh, how do we say that when, when you're exploding on Twitter and more people? Um, does it change the way you? Uh, envision the future of the company does it change something in the state of mind of you Don and all the creatives of the company well I mean I guess first and foremost uh, thanks for your support and we're also super excited to have uh, Mark Blondin and uh, Sylvain Grenier back announcing uh, for Bound for Glory they were the voices uh, in French for Impact Wrestling for many years and hope that our, our French fans around the world and, uh, you know, also here in Canada, we're a very large Quebecois uh, population. So I think it's, it's great with the French population to be able to get out. I mean, we're going to have the German commentators. We're going to have the Spanish commentators and, and, and now the French commentators. I think it's great because it allows us to reach um, fans in their native language, which allows them to, to, to understand and connect with the product and hopefully an even more meaningful level. And uh on to your question, it, uh, it, it, it's, it's exciting right now. I mean, it, it truly is exciting. All the things that have happened from, to look at where we've gone from, from just, you know, earlier this year to now, 
and, and see where we are as we are on the road to bound for glory coming off uh, a victory road event that I was very proud of and I hope everybody enjoyed. And I think that social media and, and everything else, I think you can see the buzz has been, has been very good on impact wrestling. And I think that in, in great part is due, is due to our talent, uh, old and new that have uh, gone out there and, and, and really went out there and just uh, performed above and beyond. When you look at it on all aspects, uh, our team, you know, our talent's top notch. Our, our production team for such a small group goes out there and gets so much done. And I think between providing great professional wrestling in ring, I think, you know, providing great storytelling and then trying to bring you different things like the, the recent Wrestle House. Some people loved it, some people didn't, but, uh, you know, taking advantage of these turbulent times to try different things and, and explore and experiment. And uh, I think as we head into Bound for Glory, we're certainly hitting on all cylinders. And uh, it's uh, extremely exciting to be part of uh, Impact Wrestling at this time. And we, we hope that uh, October 24th, Bound for Glory, uh, we know our roster is going to go out there and just uh, lay it all on the line and do fantastic. And uh, pretty darn confident that we're, we're going to have a hell of a show for you fans. I'm sure. Can't wait. Yeah, and, and thank you for your weekly coverage, too. I look forward in my Twitter feed and uh, always appreciate a good read. Uh, I do my best every week. <laughs> and you do your best to keep us honest sometimes, too, because you don't hold back. <laughs> uh, I say, I say, I try to have a different tone and try to make something a little bit different. Uh, sometimes I'm pushing a little bit hard, but... Um, yeah, it's the Nigma way. There's no That's other right. way. <laughs> and we appreciate it. Look, we, we appreciate the positive support and we appreciate the uh, occasional kick in the pants too. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm always positive. I always try to push the boundaries for you too. <laughs> well, we appreciate it. Thanks. All right, Stephanie, thank you very much for your time and um, look forward to seeing what you have to say about impact as it goes down tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the States on Access TV. Lee Mead from Alive Radio. I'm doing Lee, great. Doing? Thanks, Josh. Very, very excited about this premier sports and free sport deal that's been announced uh, at tail end of last week. Uh, congratulations, Scott, on putting that thing together. I know it's been a, an awful lot of work for you guys. I'm very excited about the fact that tomorrow night, 10 o'clock on free sports, for the first time ever here in the UK, we will see Impact Wrestling NHD. Uh, and there's a couple of follow-up questions for this, if, and I hope you can shed some light on it. Firstly, can you tell us how long this deal with Free Sport and Premier is for? And uh, we know that there's a whole host of great programming on, on Impact Plus that we saw previously on Fight Network and is coming up on Access, heading into Bound for Glory. Are we likely to see any of the Impact Week programming uh, appear on free sports or premier in the lead up to the biggest night of the year yeah certainly uh thanks lee and uh look we're super excited about this relationship it's, it, it's been in the works for a while these things don't happen overnight um but we're excited to have it uh, you know here on the eve of our debut on, on free sports and you know certainly the goal with free sports and premier sports is to is to build a long lasting relationship and to grow that relationship. So appreciate that you enjoy some of the, the other content that we put out and we're certainly uh, open and, and looking to discuss with, with free sports and uh, premier sports, the, the opportunity to put other programming on there because we know the UK audience uh, is loyal. We know they're rabid, they love their wrestling and we wanna go out there and help uh, and help fill that itch that they have. So. Uh, we're hoping it's a, it's a great relationship, confident it's going to be a great relationship and, uh, you know, looking to hopefully grow it with other programs and things. And, you know, maybe one day we can return to the days of British programming, like British boot camp and such. And I mean, Lee, you got a great voice and you're so smooth. I start wondering uh, when I listen to you, why we keep Josh Matthews around. So maybe one of these days we'll have a, a UK centric uh, type show. Uh, I'm just going to say, Scott, I am here and happy to help my friend. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time. As I say, very excited about this relationship and uh, looking forward to BFG NHD for just $9.99 as part of Premier Sports. Thank you so very much, you guys. Thanks, Lee.
All right, next up, uh, Rebecca from TWM News. Rebecca, what do you got? Hello, how are you, Scott? I'm great, Rebecca, how are you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. Um, so I'm just wondering, in terms of um, the roster that you have at the minute, um, we have um, quite an extensive um, UK uh, talented, um, got so many talented uh, people, I should say, God, my words. Um, is Impact looking to expand the roster in terms of UK wrestlers? Um, is that something that when the situation allows we can do? Yeah, 100%. And that's one of the things we were looking at earlier this year as we look to the future. We wanted to uh, add some some UK talent back to the roster. Uh, hit a couple of hiccups with everything going on this year, but yeah. still something that remains a priority. There's so much good talent over there. Um, I spent uh, my summer in 1996 doing the the holiday camps, uh, the the Butlins and Pontons camps over there. You lucky um, thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pretty darn good summer. And going <laughs> over there with uh, the World Wrestling All Stars, and then with uh, with this company, it's it, it's always been a great experience going going over there. And uh, to see when I was over there in the mid 90s, I, I mean, respectfully, the UK scene was not as strong as it as it, it had been previously and certainly not as strong as it's grown now. So as I look out and follow the UK scene, there's, uh, there's just so much great talent out there, including, uh, I got to give a shout out to one of my old students, Eddie Dennis, who I, I try to follow pretty yeah. closely as he, uh, as he continues to chase his dream. You know, there's, there's the perfect story. He has a school, was a school teacher, had a great job, had a great life, but something was missing. So he, he went out there and chased his dream and he's, uh, He's doing great, and maybe one of these days we'll steal him and get him to appear in an impact ring. But, <laughs> Fingers uh, crossed. But, yeah, but regardless, we definitely want to get some of that fantastic UK talent here and as part of our roster, and that's one of our goals here. Amazing. Oh, uh, uh. Okay, I think we lost Rebecca. Rebecca, thank you very much for uh, your question. You can jump back in line if you'd like. Um, but with that said, let's go to Gary from Inside the Ropes. Hey, Gary, good afternoon. Hello, thanks for having me. And congratulations on the new TV deal, Scott, um, and just everything you've done over the past few years with Impact. The, one of my favorite things about Impact right now is that it's definitely, you know, open for business, allows talents to be as big a star as they possibly can via, you know, everything they do on Twitch, appearing in the wrestling uh, events. One one person who is going to appear on the premier impact on um, free sports this week is EC3. Of course, everyone's seen that Ring of Honor video. I need to ask, will we continue to see EC3 and impact wrestling? And then just more generally, how important is it for you to let, you know, the talents go and do their own thing outside of impact as well? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I mean, look, historically wrestling has been, has clamped down very tight on talent. And sometimes having a very close relationship is, uh, is, is great. Sometimes it's required. And often it's something that both the company and the, the, the talent want. But EC3 is a different talent. He's a different guy. If you, you followed him, and, and certainly if you've ever had a conversation with him uh, you know, off camera, you'll know that he walks to the beat of his own drum. And uh, look, he's, uh, he's been a guy when he got uh, unchained shall we say, from, from where he was previously. He, it was really important to him that he go out there and get to, to experience as much different stuff as he could. And uh, that's fine by us. He's got a long history here, uh, a lot of respect for him, even though it looks like sometimes he doesn't respect our, uh, our company's history, the way he's treated uh, poor Moose's championship belt. Um, but, uh, you know, look, he's a great talent. He's, uh, he's an engaging and entertaining performer. And, uh, you know, just like we support other wrestlings, wrestlers outside projects, uh, we're happy to have him go, go expand his wings and, and, and try different things. And as long as it works for him and it works for us, then, uh, then we'll, we'll let him in the door. And hell, as you've seen with Heath, sometimes even when we don't let him in the door, the talent makes it in anyway. So um, we're excited to have him and we're, uh, he's, a, he's a unique guy and he's going to, He's going to be around when he feels like being around and he may disappear when he feels like disappearing or when somebody gives him a good thumping and uh, he's got to tuck his tail between his legs. But uh, certainly been uh, great and exciting having him around with us. Excellent. Thank you so much, Scott. Thanks, man.
Gary, thank you very much. That was Gary from Inside the Ropes. Guys, we're only going to take a few more questions. Uh, right now, we want to go to Dean from Body Slammers and Drop Kicks. Hey, Dean, how are you? Do we have Dean on the line? You scared Dean off, Josh. Anything from Dean? Going once, going twice? Simon, I think we lost Dean. Let's see what's going on in the chat here. Trent from Total Nonstop Impact. Hey, Trent, how are you, buddy? Josh, Josh, I, Josh, I, haven't, on I, 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 I haven't been mean to anybody, have I? I don't think so. Hmm. Trent, are you with us? I, I can hear you guys. Can you guys hear me? There we go. There yeah. we go. How's it going, guys? Good. Nice to uh, hear you, Trent. Good to see you, Scott. Hope all is well. Uh, quick question for you guys, though. Can you put a, can you kind of put this deal, this whole the UK deal, Scott, in kind of perspective for the US fans? What does this mean in terms of talent, programming, tours, possibly? What does it mean for, for the US side of it? Are we going to see maybe programming coming in from the UK that we can, um, that we can enjoy? Maybe Twitch specials, Impact Plus specials, something of that nature? Yeah, I mean, look at uh, Trent. I can't, uh, I can't understate the value of this deal as it puts us out there and makes us available to to so many. There you are. There, sorry, I don't. I, <laughs> I have to hit the button. Sorry, guys. Good to see you. <laughs> um, but it, look, it puts us out in front of so many UK fans. Yeah, it makes us so discoverable and, and watchable in uh, in a great market like that. And I, I think it, in many ways it's similar to to last year when we when we uh, made our move to Access TV. Uh, obviously, a bit of a different relationship between Access and ourselves than it is with with uh, free sports and premier sports. But uh, at the end of the day, what is very similar about it is it's putting us back with great broadcast partners. Excuse awesome. me, great broadcast partners that uh, respect and appreciate wrestling fans and uh, will work with us to, to get product out to. So we definitely, as I alluded to earlier, we want to be in the UK market. Certainly, if we get the opportunity to broadcast from the, U the U UK, it would be great for our U.S. and fans around the world to uh, to be able to see. Um, it's kind of a unique. It's got a little bit of that uh, football or soccer, as we call it over here, feel to it. Sometimes they're they're loud, they're rowdy, they're engaged, and they're as, as passionate as as any fans. So we're certainly hoping to use this as a base to uh, expand our, our U.K. operations and reach. Absolutely. Appreciate it, Scott. Thanks. Thanks, man. Thanks, Trent. Always good to see you uh, and the support that we get from your guys' podcast each and every week. Uh, with that said, we're going to bring in Michael C. next. Michael, welcome to Press Pass. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? 100%. Yep. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Scott, for your time and congratulations on the deal. Uh, just two quick things. One, you obviously helped uh, return Impact to glory over the past several years. I'm sure that was a heck of an undertaking. And what was that like for you to have to, you know, um, basically take a hold of the reins and, and do that? I mean, that's not something that's easy to do. And number two, uh, you've trained many wrestlers, some of whom are in Impact right now. And I was just wondering, you know, who are you really proud of when you look at them right now and say, yeah, you know, he's really killing it. Um, look, I mean, a couple of deep questions there, Michael. Um, <laughs> the, first, the, the, the first one coming back, I mean, honestly, I, yeah, I was, I was, I was shocked to, to, to see that the impact had kind of lost its way a little bit. And I was, uh, excited to be tasked and challenged of being part of the team to, uh, to, to, let's say, help it find its way. And I mean, with, with Ed Nordholm and Don Callis and then a, a great group. And I don't just say this because he, he's moderating this call and trying to keep me on task, but people like Josh Matthews, who, uh, you know, could have easily just shown up and collected a check, as they say, but just uh, the body and to, to what we're doing and just rolled up their sleeves. And it didn't matter. Everybody took on three, four or five jobs to, uh, to try to, uh, to, to get things going and to make things work. And it was, as Josh says, people here wear a lot of hats. And without that type of hard work from everybody, I don't think we'd have got it done. 
And I'm very proud of where we are. I'm very proud of how hard we came. In January of 2018, when myself and Don and Ed were over in the UK on a media junket with, uh, with Simon, you know, we, we kept stressing to people that this is not going to be, this is not going to be overnight. This is a lot, this is long-term planning. This isn't quick fix. This is, this is building sustainable success. And I think here's what two and a half years in, I think we've, uh, I think we've shown that we're, we're well on the, the way to doing that. I think we put out a great product week after week. I think we put out great pay-per-views and I think, uh, Victory Road showed what our supercharged new Impact Plus specials can be like. And uh, I think it's an exciting time, and um, I'm proud of everybody that uh, that's here with Impact Wrestling and those that aren't anymore but contributed. And I'm also, uh, you know, I'm 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 really proud to be associated with this group and what we've done. And man, as far as for people I've trained, um, well, I mean, it's just there's a lot over the years, and um, some of them of you know that I'm most proud of are, are obviously you know the Rhinos, the Bobby Roods, the Chris Sabins, the Alex Shelleys, but there, there there's also so many other that, that come through the system that uh, that most people have never heard of. But being part of their their personal journey and being part of of letting them live out their dream. Not everybody wants to be a big uh, you know television wrestler and, and have it consume their whole life because doing this does in many ways consume your whole life. But there's there's so many, you know, weekend warriors, as we used to call them, that uh, that came in and put the, the work in just as hard to achieve their dreams and achieve their goals. And as a as a coach and, and, and sometimes a mentor, I find that uh, if, if I do my job best, I'm, I, I'm not getting them to do what I want or what I think is best. I'm, I'm helping facilitate them doing what they want to do. So I don't want to some, say something cheesy, like I'm proud of all my students because some of them were real shitheads. But, uh, but overall, I've, I've worked with so many great people. And, um, you know, a guy who I didn't train, but is, is currently somebody that blows my mind on a nightly basis. I've been in the ring with him some. And, uh, you know, he actually, you know, trained with some other friends of mine and students of mine, but like Trey Miguel. Uh, I was just down watching him teach a class at his training center last week and, and to see somebody that I met as a teenager that was just barely more than a child uh, and, and see him grow into such a great young athlete and to see see him teaching the next generation uh, is, is a pretty cool thing. You know, Jim Ross always talked about the coaching tree. It's a football term. And when I see not just the guys I train, but when I see you know, the, the people that have been trained and mentored by Alex Shelley and so many of the other ones. And I, the other day I was with Rhino and, and the guy who actually trained with me, but is now like like fully under Rhino's, you know, grasp maybe, but is uh, being mentored by him. It, it's great to see the people that I got to have a role in developing, seeing them develop the next generation. And I'm, 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 I'm pretty damn proud of that. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Michael, thank you for your time, obviously, and your questions, much appreciated. Uh, we have our final question for this supersized press pass this week, and we are gonna go to Jim Conlon. Jim, you have the privilege of asking. Hello, uh, Scott. In relation to um, the last time in Ireland we had coverage of uh, Impact Wrestling, uh, it made a war. It made stars of the likes of AJ Styles, uh, Samoa and Joe, um, Samoa and Joe, uh, Chris Sabin. How excited are you for the new stars of uh, Impact Wrestling that they get the chance now to become household names here in Ireland, like the likes of the Bobby Roode, the AJ Styles, Samoa and Joes in the past, who would have been known uh, in far TNA and Impact Wrestling. For, for before they ever went on to the WWE. It also, I know you have some seasoned wrestlers that would have been there in the past, but for the new new guys who, for the first time, become household names like the previous generation uh, here in Ireland. Uh, thanks, Jim. I mean, look, I think this is a great opportunity for Impact Wrestling, and it's, uh, it's a huge opportunity for, uh, for the men and women on our roster. Uh, like I stated earlier, I, I will never forget going over to the UK for the, the first time. Actually, uh, my first my first tour over in Europe, you know, we, we, we toured through England. We uh, we did Glasgow. We also did uh, we also did uh, Belfast and Dublin, the point, one of my favorite uh, venues to perform in. And um, 
you know, look, there's, there, there's great rabid fans over there. And I think for, for a lot of the people on our roster that are a little younger and are still on the upward trajectory of their careers, going over there and, and, and seeing the, the way that they, they'll be received. And I, I know they'll be received uh, amazingly by the UK fans and the Irish fans, because I mean, that's, that, that passion is always there. And uh, it's, it's, it's appreciated, uh, but there's a passionate uh, support there for, for wrestling, like so many sports over there. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a, a different, more, more fevered uh, support that you get over there. And um, I think it's going to be a great experience for, for our talent to be able to perform each and every week on, on uh, free sports, you know, Wednesdays, 10 p.m. prime time. And uh, I, I think that when we get over there and they get to interact with the with the Irish fans uh, and all the UK fans, I think it's it's going to be a fantastic experience. And getting over, to go over there and and getting to to experience a little bit of the culture, like uh, my my grandfather was, was Irish, and and I know that going over there and and getting a chance to to go around Ireland was a great experience for me. My grandmother was was uh was english and i got to go around chelsea which is where my my family was originally from on that side and uh it, it just gave me a, a a deeper meaning and i just think it's a uh, overall excited for it and i think our roster is uh is going to be wowed by the support they'll get from irish wrestling fans and i think uh i think in return they'll uh, they'll go out there and they'll uh really put it all on the line and they'll just kick ass when they when they get in the ring in uh in ireland yeah, and I suppose lastly for me, uh, Scott, you mentioned about uh, British star for Westeros and looking for uh, British star talent. We've known in the last probably the 10 years or so, uh, the Irish wrestlers who have made a name for themselves uh, worldwide. You look at the likes of uh, Becky Lynch, the sort of sort of famous, and there's probably the characters and the sort of association that they, they bring. I suppose Irish wrestlers have been prominent throughout wrestling history and have had real sort of great success and they bring a massive sort of a uh, fan base because there are something different there is something very different between an irish wrestler and uh, a british wrestler all the same they're they're unique there are two different sort of styles so you mentioned about looking for a british wrestler where there's an irish wrestler male or female uh, is that on the radar as well yeah 100 percent. and i mean that's a great point you raised the 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 british uh are great and they're more of a catch as catch can style uh, I've always found that the Irish are a little more rugged and, and a little a little tougher, a little more aggressive. Like in, in my formative years, one of the things I did is back before there was an internet, I used to go to my way to be able to get uh, to be able to get tapes on uh, on Dave Finley, and uh, you know just that 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 straightforward, rugged, aggressive, no nonsense style. Still great technical skill, but just. Uh, just just tougher i mean it's like you're they were gonna the, the wrestling was gonna be part of the fight it wasn't like you're gonna go out there and just exchange hold counter hold when, when, you, when you wrestled uh with the irish you knew that uh that, that you were in for a fight and uh certainly we'd, we'd love to to find uh you know a young irish uh talent male or female maybe more and uh and see get them here and uh competing with our great roster Jim, thank you very much for those questions. We really, really appreciate it. And with that said, we've gone through a lot of questions this afternoon on this supersized edition of Press Pass. And um, Scott, we thank you obviously for your time and Victory Road tonight, 9 p.m. on Premier Sports and then Impact Wrestling each and every Wednesday night on Free Sports starting tomorrow, prime time. And just a, certainly an exciting and thrilling time for all of us here in Impact Wrestling as we get ready for Bound for Glory, 18 nights live on pay-per-view. It is going to be the biggest night of our year, and we certainly can't wait to share it with all of you. Scott, any final thoughts before we say goodbye? No, just thanks to, to everybody out here that's part of spreading the word, all the, all the press and all the people that are out there helping us spread our gospel, and to, to them as well as all the fans, thank you for your support. Thank you for your trust in what we're what we're doing here, and uh, we're excited. The road for Bound for Glory is really hitting the home stretch, and can't wait to uh, to have an amazing event on October twenty fourth. In the meantime, um, you know, tune in Tuesday nights in Canada and the U.S. Tune in Wednesdays now on Free Sport, and 
everywhere else you can around the world. And, and thank you. Let's, uh, let's have a great fall season. We'll see everybody tonight. Thanks, Josh.